<laughs> he's doing it for all of us. Look at your neighbor and say, he's doing it for all of us. He's doing it for all of us. God no respect a person. What he said, he'll do what he spoke, he'll make good. Amen. 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 You know what happened to a lot of people? They think God got picks. He got favorites. No, he don't. God looks, but he favors faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Turn around, look at your neighbor. Tell me grateful they came out today. Good to have y'all with us. Good to have y'all with us. Amen. I know you could have went to other places. They got plenty of churches. They got plenty of places you could be. But I thank God you came here. But I guarantee you, you go hear the word of God here. We, we don't have too many people that want to sing. We don't have too many people want to, uh, <laughs> you know, what they call a praise team. Amen. But thank God that we got singers. We got people that sing in the congregation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe Amen. in music. Amen. We believe in praise Amen. and worship. Amen. Amen. But you can't twist nobody's arm, make them want to do. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Am I right? So what you have to do is just keep encouraging people. They want to do it, they'll do it. They don't, they don't. This is the thing that we call in church is volunteering. Amen. 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 I want to deal with a topic that God has been dealing with us about. And, and we've been over and over and over and over and over and over again. But I don't think it's time to give up on it. What do you think? I think it's time that we, we be who God calls us to be. Amen. So I want to read something out of the fifth chapter of Matthew. That uh, Jesus said about you and me. And I think this is the thing that, that um, most people are waiting on the Lord <laughs> to come back. Am I right? Amen. To fix things. Am I right? The Bible said he's the light of the world. Am I right? Amen. And he's the light the light of the man. The first chapter of the book of St. John, he's the light the light of the man that cometh into the world. Amen. 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 And then David said, the entrance of his word giveth light and understanding to the simple. But I'm going to tell you something else that's like 13th verse says, ye are the salt of the earth. Yes. Right? But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Am I right? Yeah. It is henceforth good for nothing, but it be cast out and it be trodden on the foot of men. Then in the 14th verse, he said, ye are the light of the world. Is that what it say? Amen. Or did I make that up? It's in red, so listen up. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Sixteen verse. Everybody read it with me. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the privilege to be before this congregation today. We thank you for all those that are here and all that are listening by way of social media. We pray thee, God, for speaking to them specifically, oh Lord, that specific thing that they need to hear at this specific time. I pray that you impart some spiritual blessings, some spiritual gifts, some spiritual grace unto them. I pray that the anointing of God will manifest so that every demonic force, evil influence in their life will be driven out while they're under the sound of my voice. And that they will take hold to the word, that they can continue to stand on the word and resist the devil and he'll flee from them. I give you praise. I give you glory and all the God. But I'm just your instrument, your water boy, your tool. Use me for your glory to speak what you have and to speak for your people. And I'll be careful ever to give you the glory and all the honor. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen and amen again. Now turn with me over to the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. And I want to take my time because I realized that uh, for some years now, I, I'm, I'm repenting. I beg your forgiveness, Mount Herman, and those that uh, used to follow me for years, listen by way of social media, that maybe I was talking a little too fast and people couldn't, couldn't, um, <laughs> couldn't understand my speech and I should have slowed down. Forgive me. But I was never intended to, uh, I was a little excited, caught up in the power and the and the, and the thrill of the word. Amen. And so it got me. I realized. And all you're getting. What did it say? That folk wasn't getting a good understanding of what I was trying to say. And that's why so many that have heard me. 
listen to me for so many years are living shoddy lives. Amen. Something else you need to understand, saints. I'm going to share this. I don't want to. I, I have to tell about myself sometimes. I'm not into a whole lot of new stuff. Follow me? Even though I can do a whole lot of fancy stuff, I don't. Because that's not me. Amen. Amen. And so a lot of times people be asking me, they want to know why I won't just go do this, I won't do that. And I say, because that's not me. Amen. Amen. But you got a lot of people that, you know, they barely making it, but they look like they're doing good. Amen. I really look like I'm barely making it and doing very well. Amen. I'm real. Looks don't mean nothing to me. Amen. Amen. Even what people thought about me one time, it didn't bother me at all. Whatever you want to think, that's your business. Amen. But then I began to realize I was a public figure. So I had to make it plain. <laughs> so they understand there ain't nothing shoddy going on here. Don't, make, don't fool yourself. Amen. Amen. Folk might be out there fornicating all that other kind of stuff, but don't look this way. Amen. I'm not putting them down. You know, sinners are going to be sinners. Amen. Saints are going to be saints. Amen. Amen. But I, I'm not a flashy person, so that's why I'm trying to tell you. So, so if you're looking for the flash, don't look this way. <laughs> Amen. So I might wear, I have new suits in my closet. And you might see me wearing the same suit for 10 years. Seriously, I've got a suitcase full of shirts. Full of them. Stuffed. But you might see me wear the same shirt for 10 years. That's just the way I am. You know, my own mama, uh, Minister Geraldine Clawson, came here and told y'all that. Someone might have not been on social media at that time, but they came, she came and told y'all that. If, if my son, when he was young, he had a pair of shoes and they had holes in him. He was still wearing them. So my, my daddy was crying, called me crying, talking about, I'm going to get, next time I get me some money, I'm going to get that boy some shoes. And she, and she said it right here. I told my daddy, daddy, don't worry about that boy. He got shoes. He just won't wear them. That's just where I am. I got, I'm going to give them away though because I they just sitting there. I got boxes of new shoes that I ain't put on. I'm about to give them away. I wear a 10. I wear a 10. So if you wear a 10, I'm about to bring something to you. Amen. All right. All right, brother. I got you. Amen. But I, I just, I'm like, I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> don't even ask why. I don't know. That's just the way I am. But a lot of people flash and they like to be always wearing new stuff and showing out in front of people not me i'm like that person incognito you look at me you, you look at me i hope you'll never know what i really got <laughs> so let's look at the fifth chapter of ephesians and the eighth verse well let me back up a little bit because i want you to understand why he said this can i can i read a little bit more than that since so you understand why he said this so i'm gonna start the first verse and read today's verse and y'all just pray for him if the word offends you be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And, and that's the focus that I'm going to have on that first verse. Because I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But that's not where I want to take you to in this chapter. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness are covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You know, people always love to be clowning around all the time. I'm going to leave that alone. Let me read on. I'm not going to mess with you right now because that's not the point for the servant. Everybody, if I start messing with that, folk will be stuck there. And can't go on with me. So he said, for this you know, that no whoremonger, why they can't just get one and be happy? I don't understand that, but leave me alone. Just get one and be happy. No, I'm going to see, if I, if I keep messing with this, I'm going to be stuck. I'm trying to get somewhere. <laughs> the unclean person, not a covetous man, who is an idolater. So they, they might well be worshiping idols has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. They don't have no inheritance, none, in the kingdom of Christ or in God. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? But you listen to them, they, 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 they'll tell you that, no, I'm, no, I'm saved. How? 
Ah. Uh, you can't be saved if you practice the works of the flesh. Nope. It takes the Spirit of God to be saved. It's in you. You ain't going to be doing some of these things. That's right. Amen. 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 Now watch this. Now watch this. Say, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Y'all see that one? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. What? No, we ain't supposed to be acting like them. Amen. <laughs> We're not supposed to be acting like them folk. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Come out from among these separate, said the Lord. Didn't he say it? Church not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. That's six chapter book seven Corinthians. And then he said, I'll be a God unto you. And you'll be my sons and daughters. Yes. Amen. But people don't want they want to they won't want to come out from them and they want to keep touching the unclean thing, but yet they want to say they're God's children. Well, don't you think God would know who his people is? I would think so. So if God didn't say it, that's just you. All right. Amen. You can't be living like that. Now why the hey, verse eight, this is what I want to get to now. For you were sometime darkness. Did he say sometime? Sometimes. But probably past tense, right? Unless you're not born again. But now are you light in the law? The next part said walk as children of the light. That means live like children of the light. Amen. If Jesus is the light, how did he live? Be followers of God as dear little children. How did he live? He lived out the will of the Father. And the Father said, be ye holy. For I am holy. You know what the father said? Yeah. Then the other place said, Follow peace with all men and holiness yeah. without which no man. So I'm saying no human being can see God. So God is calling us out from the world, not in the world. To be, even the word church is taken from the Greek word ecclesia, meaning call out ones. So what did God call us out of? The way of the world. Thank Amen. Colossians 1 and 13 said, God delivered us. Somebody say delivered. delivered. From the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We're no longer under the authority of Satan. We're under God's authority. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And that 28th 20, 20 chapter book of uh, Matthew in the 18th verse. Jesus said, all power. Some of them. Oh, no. huh? oh. He got more than the devil got. Oh. You know what people say? The devil got power, but God got all power. Wait a minute. If the devil got power and God got all power, how can that be? He can't have none if God got it all. So what is it that the devil has that God don't have? Deception, lies. Amen. He called people to kill themselves. He don't have to. Amen. He lied to them, and they believe the lie. And by believing the lie, they do themselves in. Look at the neighbor and say, remember, remember, anytime the devil talking to you, no matter how good it sounds, he lied. He can't help himself. Jesus said, Jesus said in the eighth chapter of St. John, he's the father of lies. Y'all got that? So don't pay no attention to him. So you, you saints, you believers, you born again people. He come in your ear and say, you ain't saved. Laugh. And, and one thing you need to understand, the devil ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. Zip nada. In other words, tell him to see his way out of it. Now, I don't know how y'all say that. Y'all not say I just get pieces of it every once in a while. Yep. And see your way out of it. He is the accuser of the brother. Huh? That's what Revelation 12 and 11 say. That's why you don't get no conversation folk talking against a brother or sister. Amen. And if you if you like me, you'll start quoting the word. I was talking to a lady the other day. 
And uh, she kept on doing it, and I kept on quoting. I finally said, the book said, thou shalt not go up and down amongst the brethren as a tail bearer. <laughs> she finally got the hint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of church folk don't understand why they, they're in trouble. Amen. Why they're having such a hard time. <laughs> uh, you better be careful about how you talk about your brother or sister. Amen. I ain't say preacher, I said your brother or sister. So if the preacher is your brother or sister, you better be careful how you talk about it. Amen. Amen. You know, a book also said that love covers a multitude of faults. Amen. Amen. And, and he that saved a brother, went up, saved, he that went up a brother saved a soul from hell. We're not supposed to be going out here tell Baron about what they've done and doing. No, Y'all got what I'm saying? No, God didn't call you for that. No, but you got a lot of people, they think that, uh, I don't know what it is, maybe it's uh, the, been watching too much of uh, them, what they call them shows? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Reality. Them reality talk shows and stuff. Maybe that's what the problem is. Do y'all know that if, if you keep hanging around folk, you start acting like them? Amen. You start talking like them? Amen. But Jesus said, follow me. Huh? Amen. Jesus said, follow me. Amen. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. He didn't tell you to follow them. Because nope. he wants you to follow him so you can start acting like him. Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. How did Jesus act? He acted like God's son. Amen. He said the words he spoke was his father's words. Yeah. He said the work he'd done his father, he, what he saw his father do. Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. He said, I didn't come to do my own will, but I come to do the will of my father that sent me. Yeah. And then when the disciples told talk about, you know, John teaches followers to pray. Teach us to pray. Yeah. Jesus said, pray in this manner. Yeah. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Like this. Thy will be done yeah. in earth. So what are we supposed to be doing? God's will. God's will. Yeah. Amen. Not our will, but his will. But St. the Bible tells in that eighth birth that in, in Think about that. Think about that. You're a light. What's light for? To show the way, right? But you hiding. You hiding behind four walls. Afraid to go around the sinners. And then when you do, you put a basket over yourself. Maybe not a bastard of doing what they do, but it's a bastard of quietness. Yes. Yep. Silence is consent. Yes. Amen. Amen. I remember one time my, my, my cousin, he, he respected me highly today, and I believe he said, his name is Thomas Earl Stokes. Yeah, the Sunday boy. That's what we call him, Sunday boy. Sunday boy came to me, we went back in the day when I first got saved. We used to run out, we'd go different places together, me and, the, me and the cousin, my cousin and them on Sunday. And we was in this the thing bar, but they had this pool table and everything. They served food and all that kind of stuff. They they were drinking beer, I was drinking milk. <laughs> they ain't talking about who shot John. I was talking about Jesus. Amen. So my look, my cousin, the son of boy, he came up to me, put his finger in my face, and said, "If you're not gonna do what we do, why you go with us?" I said, "Y'all pick me up." Amen. <laughs> That's right, daughter. That was the end of that. They didn't pick me up anymore. Amen. <laughs> no, I wasn't talking stuff to put them down. Right. I'm just talking about the goodness yes, of the Lord. Amen. I was just sharing what Jesus was doing for me. Amen. But they didn't like that because it making them feel bad. Yeah. That's what yeah. saints supposed to do. Let your light so shine yeah. that men will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. They don't know what they're doing. Nope. Their master is darkness. Yeah. The Bible said in Colossians 1 and 13, you heard me read it. It said, he delivered you from the power of darkness. So Satan is darkness. Yeah. They, serve, they, they are sinner. They're in darkness. Yeah. They can't see what's going on. They don't understand what's going on. So if you're the light, you need to illuminate their life. Yeah. David said, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light upon my path. You don't know nothing but else to say. Just say what the word say. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. They talk about this, talk about that. See what God said about it. Hallelujah. Man, the weather's so bad. Oh, the storm coming up. So you know, Jesus was out on that ship. And he was sleep, he was sleeping. 
And the boys got scared for their life because the storm came up, just like you see this storm coming. And uh, they woke him up, and he rebuked them. He said, oh, you have little faith. And then turned around and rebuked the storm. And the storm ceased. And the waves became calm. And the boys said, what man, man are you? See, you try that every once in a while, it might win them. Somebody said, Pastor, you ever done that? More than one time. Yeah. Amen. Thank and they said the same thing. What kind of man are you? Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at your neighbor and say, Son of God. Son of God. Amen. Amen. But if you don't apply the light, if you don't let the light shine, they won't ever know. Amen. Then if you go back to that fifth chapter first, he said, You are the salt. Salt seasons. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. I got salt shakers. I got salt in boxes. In the closet, in the cabinet. But you know it don't stay there. Because it don't do any good sitting there. All right. But when I'm fixing my food, I get me a little bit of that salt in that box and I shake it in the food. Yeah. Why to season the food? Yeah. Right. Back in the day when my uncle and granddad and them used to, you know, kill hogs and stuff like that, they would cure it out with salt. Yeah. Hanging up in the, in the, whatever you call that place. Smoke out. Smoke out. There you go. Thank y'all. I forgot all my smoke house. Amen. Yeah. And uh, that salt would preserve it. Hallelujah. I don't think y'all applying your salt. I don't think you're seething in nobody. Because if you are lives around you start being preserved from this evil that's going on. There's too many people getting like that. Let me try it that way. Too many people getting like that. You got it that time? Because I believe if you were walking like you God and talking like God talked, they wouldn't be acting that way. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But the church goes all, and I just hate to say it, we love to have all these conventions and all these revivals and all these conferences and all these things. They go back home and live like the rest of the people. Yeah. No, you go to a convention, you're supposed to come back fired up. Yeah. I remember some years ago, y'all pray for me. I remember some years ago when I first joined, uh, uh, it was A.L. Williams, I think, at that time. It soon became Prime America. I'm not giving no advertisement. If, if you've heard that, you're going to send me, send me some money. Pay for it. <laughs> Amen. And, and we go to them little meetings they would have, and the man be fired up talking about how much money he make. And we come back out of there fired up and we'll make some money too. <laughs> y'all know what I'm saying? That's the way it's supposed to be when the saints come back from the revival, when they come back from the conference, when they come back from the, the convention, you're supposed to come back and everybody around you get fired up. Amen. Yeah. I remember. I remember back in the day, pray for him. I'm. I'm getting old, and I started rambling. Y'all pray for him. So back in the day, when I was first got saved, and I worked in the plant. Anybody know what a textile plant is? Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. I worked in a textile plant. So I, I went there, and I started talking to people about how I was saved. Boy, they started picking on me. Yes, Persecution brought up, broke out. Yes. <laughs> they started ridiculing me, putting me down. Yes. Amen. So I go back to my pastor, my father, the gospel. And I say, man, they talk about me, put me down, all this kind of stuff. He's, and he'll, he'll say, you get a toll after a while. Amen. Amen. So he started putting the word of God in me. And one of the things he used to give me, turn to the sixth chapter book of Ephesians. This is one of the things he used to, I'm going to give it to you just like he gave it to me. This is one of the things he used to say to me all the time. I want, I want you to get this. Because you get this, boy, you're going to be you're gonna be a mess. Uh-huh. So he, re, he would quote this 13, 14 verse. He said, wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God. That you may be able to withstand an evil thing. Yeah. And having done all the stain. Yeah. And do his stand. stand. He stopped right there and say, stand. stand. Y'all got what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what he's doing. He fired me up every time. Yeah. And you know crazy me. Yeah. I saw God. When I first got saved, I don't know what happened to y'all young people. I don't even understand it. I can't get it. But when I first got saved, I sought after God like with what what how I say that thing out? Reckless, reckless abandonment. I try to use y'all word now. I used to say like a dog after a cat. But I, I sought after God with reckless abandonment. Right. Whatever it took. I went to Bible. I found out about what fast, all them fasting they were doing. I went on six month fast. All right. I'm for real. Yeah. I went on consecration. I stayed on for six months. Why? Because I wanted power. Hallelujah. I'm for real. Yeah. Folk got saved on that job. Yeah. Ain't that right, Paul? Wherever you at. Folk got saved. Yeah. I was starting seeking God, start fasting, praying, seeking God, and going on that job telling them about Jesus. Talking that talk, walking that walk, yes, they mess around and saw the power of God and they changed. Yeah. I'm for real. 
And I'm so excited about that, I didn't want to leave. Oh, let me tell you that part, too, because y'all need to hear that. When I used to go to work, first time I started working there, I, you know, you don't, people don't like to work. I love to work. <laughs> so I went, I went to work there, and I was talking about Jesus and everything, sharing Jesus with them, and they fight me and send me back home. After a while, I got a little discouraged about going to work. Yep. So I was always praying about the Lord make a way for me to get out of work, <laughs> like some of y'all. <laughs> Amen. And, Jesus, and you remember when God created Adam? He, he created a God, East and Eden, and put Adam in it and told him to go to work. He was, he was immortal, would have never died. Y'all got what I'm saying? There was nothing missing, nothing hurt, nothing lacking in the, in the world. But God told him to go to work. What that mean? Work is part of life. I do what he want me to do. So one day I was walking around on that plant, in that plant, walking around the machines, and God said to me, if all my people were to leave this place, who would I have to tell them about me? A peace beyond understanding dropped down in my heart, and I never want to leave again. And I enjoyed going to work, because I was there for God. The Bible said that, that we were supposed to live for God. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Paul says me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. Amen. But that's not the way most church folk are. We ain't talking about that. Let's get back to this part, the first verse of six, fifth chapter. Fifth chapter, book of uh, Ephesians. Be ye followers of God. Be ye therefore followers of God. Is that right? Yeah. As dear who? Children. Yeah. Then he said walk in love. Now I'm going to tell you why he said walk in love. Look at the sixth verse. Let no man deceive you with vain words. But because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. Now watch this. The word of God tells us. Not my word, but God's word. Tells us. Are you listening? That if we do what they do, some chap, we're going to reap the same thing they reap. But you got people that in the household of faith, don't realize that there are two commandments. And Jesus said they were the of the law. The love of the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength. And then what did he say? The love of your neighbor as yourself. He said that was the fulfillment of the law. Now look at 13 chapter of the book of Romans. And see what Paul said. That's what Jesus said. Now, look what Paul said. The eighth verse says, Y'all ready? Owe no man nothing. Owe no man anything but to love one another. You know what he said? For he that loveth another has what? Fulfilled the law. Now, watch this. For this, if you do this, you will not commit adultery. You'll not kill. You'll not steal. Now, this is how Paul re referred to Jesus. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Why did the work? Love work. I just saw that. Love work no ill to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, people will leave out that ninth verse. They would have skipped that whole part, but they said we ain't under the law. But Paul said, if you walk in love, you won't do them things. Amen. So if we're doing that, we can't follow God. Look at your neighbor say, you can't practice sin, can't practice sin. And, follow God. and follow God. But that's not you, so we're going to move on. Go to 14 chapter book of St. John. Be your father of God, dear little children, walk in love, and you can do this. What I'm about to start reading to you right now. I guess it's right, chapter. I think 14 chapter St. John. Love, love, birth. Yeah, we go, we go hit that. We got to hit that. I must back to temper. So, so this is what's going on, saints. We're talking. And thank God for the talking. But we need to bring forth some works. 
Because Jesus said, if you don't bear fruit, you're going to be cut down and cast into the fire. Amen. So we got to bring forth some fruit. Hallelujah. That's some works. Y'all got what I'm saying? Thank God you believe, but demons believe and tremble. Amen. We got to bring forth some corresponding actions. Hallelujah. The Bible said the man that hears and don't do is not blessed in his deed. But the one that hears and does, that's James first chapter. So if you hear and do it, you can bless. Amen. Now watch this. Now watch this. Watch the temper. Temper is it. But believe it not, thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. So I made reference to this verse a while ago. He doeth the works. Amen. Now watch this. Believe me that I'm in the Father, and in the Father in me. I else believe me for the very works sake. See what he's saying? If you don't believe what I'm saying, at least believe me because you see the works. But I don't, want, I don't want to dwell on what I'm about to say too long. So say, Pastor, keep moving. The reason why the world don't believe in the church anymore. They hear them, but they don't see no works. You got what I'm saying? Amen. They see them trying to, the, work, the church trying to be like them. The world should be looking at us and want to be like us. Amen. Amen. Something come, we st we still standing. This you like the, you like the tree. I call it a little willow, and the wind come blowing through and blow down all them oaks. You do like that, and then once the wind go, you go by like like that. Then the world look at you and say, "How come you didn't get thrown destroyed?" You look at them and say, "I bow down to the Lord." <laughs> I bowed down to Jesus yeah. and he took care of all that. Hallelujah. You know that records of that on, on the news where they every time I certain storm went through certain areas and they look at this one little house. They done tore up everything around there, but that one little house just standing there. Yeah. Then they interview him and find out there was a saint. Yeah. Born again believer. Yeah. That's right. I called on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, that, that, that ain't light. If that ain't sought, I don't know what is. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A thousand falling at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, and it ain't come nigh you. Yeah. And the world sees it. Amen. 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 If that don't open the door for a testimony, I don't know what will. That don't give you the opportunity to share the faith, I don't know what will. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's look what Jesus, let's go and see what Jesus said. I think it's the 12th verse, right? I, I got past that 11th verse. Yeah, 12th verse. Very good. That means truly, sincerely. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And what greater work than these shall he do? Because I go unto my Father. So what Jesus is saying, somebody says, I'm going to do greater. No. You're going to do greater in the sense of more. See, where well, he only could do a little because he was only one person. You got me? Yeah. So we're a lot of folk. Yeah. If every one of us duplicate what he did, yeah. that's more. Hallelujah. That's greater. So we're talking about greater in number. Yeah. Not greater in ability or whatever. Y'all got me? So that means that mean where he could only do as much as one person could do. Now the body of Christ can reach the whole world. Amen. Working signs, wonders, and miracles. So when I when I see something going on, lift your hand and tell God, thank you. God's healing somebody. You got infection in your ear. You're healed right now. Whether you're sitting here on uh, uh, social media, God is healing you right now. Receive your healing. The pain leaves you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we, when we think about the works that he's done, we can do also. We don't see problems in room. Amen. Amen. I, I was, I was, yeah, you got to be, you got to be bold in this stuff too. Because. I was getting on this plane and I was walking in the door and people's in front of me, people behind me. I laid my hand on the plane. I said, Lord, don't go on this plane. It ain't going to come down. It's going to make our destination. Get us where we need to go. Or don't let it get off the ground. Amen. So we were sitting there in the plane, that same plane. I laid hands on said that. We were sitting there in the plane and, and the pilot cranked it up to start and it started rumbling. Like the whole plane would vibrate. So he shut it down. Then he tried it again. He did it again. He came on the he came on the loudspeaker, whatever you call that thing, in the car, whatever it is. He said, "I wouldn't take my family up in this plane, and I'm not taking y'all up." So we had to go back and wait for another plane. It didn't get off the ground because it wasn't ready to go. 
I said, Lord, you're going to take us to our destination. If it can't, don't let it get off this ground. Thank you, Lord. It didn't get off. Amen. How come that happened, Pastor? Because I was a born again child of God and I didn't keep my mouth shut. Yeah. I, I didn't do what they call it. Why did Why did They ain't praying. That's meditating. You have what you say. You want to show that to you? Go to 11th chapter book of Mark. You got to say it. Your neighbor said, You got to say it. And it's good to let somebody hear you say it. So when it manifests and it comes to pass, they, they know that God said it. I remember I was in the post office some years ago. And these white, these brother, white brother, these white brother was talking about. And I messed around and said it. Then these light-skinned brother was talking about <laughs> the storm was coming in. Oh. Amen. And they, they were talking about the storm was coming in. And they seemed a little bit unnerved. I said, you know, I said to the Lord, I'm saying, I said, ain't no storm. It ain't gonna come within 100 miles of our coast and go shoot on up the coast. Amen. I said, I said, I'm rebuking. It ain't coming, but within 100 miles to the coast and it going on up the coast. Yeah. They looked at me. And I just went on about my business, praising God. And guess what happened? The newscaster said it came within 100 miles of our coast and it went on up the coast. <laughs> I, I wanted, I wanted them, the nice kind of brother to remember that they heard this God's kind of brother say in the name of Jesus that they're not come within 100 miles of our coast. Why don't they remember that? They might, I don't know. I, don't, I remember the other day I was talking to this guy and uh, doing some business with him. And I was getting, he was thanking me for doing business with him. And he was about to leave. And I grabbed his hand because we were sitting there. And I was talking to him. And I found out he was a born again believer. He was talking about he didn't have insurance because he changed states and all that got lost. And so his son was sick. And they were just believing God that they can finally find somebody, a doctor, can, can, can look at him. So they're going to take him to the clinic. So I told him, we're going to believe God that God will heal him. He said, okay. So, uh, and I must have messed him up because when I get ready to leave, and he was thanking me for doing business with him, and I grabbed his hand. I held on to it. I said, your son is healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> he got a little embarrassed. He said, yes, he, yes, he is. Yes, he is. I don't know if he felt something or what happened. <laughs> Amen. Lord. See, that, that's what saints are supposed to be doing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, he was a sinner. I've seen I'd have done the same thing. But it made it much easier because he was a brother. Yeah. So I got what I'm saying? Amen. And so that made me know beyond a shadow of a doubt. He's a brother. He got faith in God. I got faith in God. Two churches agree. Shall be done. Amen. Amen. Bigger name and say it works. it works. You just need to work it. Amen. Say it again. You just need to work it. Amen. Now let me read on a little bit about this, from this. Uh, what, what did I tell y'all to go? Mark eleven chapter eleven chapter around that twenty second twenty third verse. Can I read that to you? Well, if you don't want it here, just plug your ears. Amen. Amen. Jesus said. Jesus has to say unto them, talk to the disciples. We are disciples. We born again believers. Have faith in God. A lot of people, a lot of my, a lot of my sons and daughters of the Lord that heard me say that, they call me about certain stuff, and I say, have faith in God. Yes, I, either I say, trust God. Yes, Amen. 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 People wonder why I've done that, because see, I was there. I was there when they, they, they could help me and didn't help me. You got what I'm saying? Amen. I had people that could have helped and didn't help me. Now I look back, I thank God Hallelujah. that they didn't. Because if they would have stepped in you understand what I'm saying? I'd have never learned how to use my faith. Amen. Amen. But by, by them not, they didn't even offer. They didn't even say have faith in God. I just chose to have faith in God. At least I told my son and the daughter to have faith in God. Trust God. Amen. But I, I worked that faith. Woo, I saw some miracles. Woo, I saw some miracles. We talking about manifestations. We talking about money and bank accounts when there wasn't any. You talking about bills getting paid and you didn't pay them. How'd that happen? God. Watch what he said. Have faith in God. Isn't that what he said? I developed that thing to where I got to where I could speak things into existence. I said one day I was looking for some poke beans. I make my chili beans out of poke beans. And I thought I had one more can of poke beans in that cabinet. And I went to that cabinet. I looked. I pulled all them cans out. Looked in with no poke beans. Put them all back in there. Went back to the next camp. Pulled all them out with no poke beans. I looked back. I said, I know I got one more can of poke beans in that can. That's a lot of faith for just a can of poke beans. Amen. So I walked over there. Opened that door. That said a can of poke beans right there in front of me. 
That's how I get there. I just said it. I said, I know I got one more pen in there. That angel said, okay, let's help that boy out. Okay. And there were times I said, Lord, I know I got some money right here. I got money right here in this pocket. I'll be down there and pull a ward out. Glory to God. That's how that money get there, that angel. He slipped, he slipped up on me and slapped, slapped it in that pocket. Amen. Amen. It worked like that for real, according to your faith. Look at him say, according to your faith. See, I serve God. Look at him say, he served God. So you got to understand that. When you serve God, you can, he'll let you do some of these things. Now watch it, watch that. He said, have faith in God, right? But verily, watch it. I verily I say unto you. Huh? That whosoever. Look at him say, are you a whosoever? Just talking to you. That whosoever shall say to the man. Cast into the sea. Now here's the problem. And shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. How you go? That don't work. You got to open your mouth and say what God say. Amen. Look at Romans the 10th chapter. This is how you exercise the greater works. You got to say something. You don't never do the greater works. You got your mouth shut. Say something. Let them hear you say it. I was riding with this guy some years ago right here in Dillon. We was on our way somewhere. I was taking somewhere. And uh, it, 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 it was about to rain. There was forecast 100% rain. He looked at me. He said, you always talk about you can speak to the clouds and, and they'll break up and the rain will stop. He said, speak to the clouds. Hallelujah. I said, I can't do that unless the Lord give me permission. I said, hold on a minute. I dropped my head and said, Lord. And the Lord said, do it. So right there in front of him, right in the car with me, I said, I rebuke these clouds. I command them to break up and the sun to come out. It's not low rain. I mean, normally it'd take a few minutes. But within a minute, the clouds started to break up. And the sun started to come out. He looked at me and said, what kind of man are you? I said, I took out the child of God. See, children of God have certain privileges and rights yes. that others don't have. Amen. 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 We in a covenant with the most high. Oh, 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 oh. And, he, and, and he said his covenant would not, he would not break and he had not altered the word that had gone forth out of his mouth. Hmm. So I got a covenant with him and I'm going to say what he said. So he <laughs> He ain't going to break that color and he's going to change his word that's coming out of my mind. Woo! My, 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 my. So you can say to whatever your problem is and command it to be resolved or be removed. If I need you, demand it to be met. So it don't hurt to set your bills out there. I demand the name, I decree and declare that you are paid in Jesus' name. Amen. Get bold enough to say, I command you to be paid off. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo! Might get so excited one day, go ahead and you put your checkbook out there. So I decree in the crowd, I got a hundred thousand dollars in that account. Yeah. And go to check go to, go to check your account that said a hundred thousand dollars in there. Don't forget to pay your tax. <laughs> First things first. Hallelujah. And then one, once you get a church you're tired, don't forget to bless Pastor Claus. Just slap, slap. Hey, hey. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost hands shake. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm about right trying to tell you how the book said, oh, believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. Amen. Believe in his prophet and so shall you prosper. Yeah. Amen. 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 So he's going to give us the right. He said, if you believe and not doubt in your heart. Yes. If God said, Romans 8 and 16. Now, if, if spirit ain't bearing with your spirit, we're here today to get you saved. Okay. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Isn't that, isn't that right? Yeah. Romans 8 and 16. So if the Holy Ghost is bearing witness that you his child. Then watch this 17th verse. Everybody turn there right quick. I was going somewhere else, but turn there right quick. 17th chapter book of Romans. Because it's time out for this. He's pulled my out and depressed. And it ain't working for me. It's time out for that. Amen. 
So I don't want, I don't, I, God said something to me some time back here. And, and you know, I don't want God's second best. Amen. <laughs> I want his best. Amen. So if I want his best, that means I got to give him my best. Hallelujah. See, a lot of folk don't mind living in God's permissive will and God's submissive will. Now, I want it perfect will. Oh, she copper, she tala. I want to be, I want to be exactly what God want me to be. I want to do exactly what God told me to do. And I want to say exactly what God told me to say. You understand what I'm saying? There is no safer place to be than in the, in his perfect will. Amen. Them boys were told to go across the shore and go to the other side. And they started to the other side, and a storm came. They were roaring almost all night fighting that storm, trying to get to the other side. And somewhere over the wee hours, it by 4 o'clock that afternoon that he sent them to the other side. By 3, three o'clock the next morning, here comes Jesus walking on the water, and they were still trying to get across. <laughs> against that wind, against that storm. And, and they got scared and thought, thought, thought it was a ghost and was about to die. And one of them had enough dirt. You know, Jesus said, be not afraid. It's just me. Can you imagine that? The water is boisterous and waves are high and the wind is blowing and you're about to die and here comes somebody walking across the water acting like they're on a Sunday afternoon stroll through the park. Looking at you talking about don't be afraid, it's me. <laughs> but you know that's the way Jesus worked? In the middle of the storm, in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your trial, in the hardest time of your life, Jesus will come walking by and say, Peace be still. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 The Lord will come walking by and he said, I got you. Yes. 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 He come walking. He come walking by, and he look at you, and he say, "Call on me." Hallelujah! I I show I show you great and mighty thing. Where I told y'all to go, I forgot that quick. Where I told y'all to go, Romans eight sixteen seventeen verse says seven. That's the one I want. I quoted to you the sixteen, but I want you to look at that seventeen because I want you to look at it with me. As I read it to you. And if children. Then heirs. Heirs of what? Look at that name. Of God. Look at that name and say you inherited God. You see, you see why it's, 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 it's ludicrous for saints to be the way they are in the United States. How in the world are we getting this shape? We heirs of God. Scared, walk around here trembling, afraid, locked up behind four doors. Walk, I ain't gonna go there with that. I'm gonna leave. Cause, cause, you know, that's calling their faith, right? Amen. But you know what I'm saying? We are heirs of God. Yeah. We should be able to face anything that come along and face it with boldness. The righteous, the bold as a lion. Hallelujah. David was standing there and all them boys were scared. King Saul standing head and shoulder of every man in Israel. He up there scared and shaking and going on. My God. And this giant standing there talking about what he gonna do to them. This little boy, 16 years old, stood up and said, send me out against him. Thank you, Lord. All these grown men shaking. A little boy gets up and says, send me out against him. I'll go. Nobody wanted to go. Out of all these, these renowned soldiers of Saul, none of them wanted to go. They were all scared. The little teenage boy stood up and said, Saul, I'll go against him. You know they looking at David wondering what in the world wrong with him. Yeah. I told you, his brother said, I told you to stay home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scared he about to get killed. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. And he walks out on, they, he, you know, Charles tried to give me all this stuff. He said, I don't need that. Yeah. I ain't tried, I ain't practicing that. I ain't never used that. So he walked out on that field, looked at that big giant. That giant said, I'm a dog. That you send a boy against me with a stick? Yeah. Say, David, come to me. I'm going to take your head off your shoulder and give your carcass to the birds. Yeah. This guy, based on history, he might have been talking this, 11 feet something. Look at David. David looking at him probably about five foot. Looking at this man. 
talking all this talk. Yeah. You know what? You come against me uh -huh. with a sword, with a, sword. a spear, and a shield. Uh -huh. But I'm coming against you Hallelujah. in the name Hallelujah. of the living yeah. God. Hallelujah. And not only am I going to take your head off your shoulders, but I'm going to give the whole host of the first time to the birds. And you know, he wasn't like y'all church folk. Got all that talk. He wasn't in the church building around the saints saying that. He was out there on the battlefield. Y'all got what I'm saying? They got all that big talk right up in the church. And when you get outside the church and you're facing these problems, you ain't got nothing to say. But David said it, then the Bible said he took off running. Yeah. To meet that guy. Yes, he didn't hang back and wait on something to happen. He, he, he didn't wait for the lightning. He didn't wait for the thunder. <laughs> the thunder was his feet running across that field. <laughs> Swinging that slingshot. <laughs> Y'all can't see it like I can see it, but I can see this. This little boy with a slingshot going against this giant with a sword, a spear, and a shield. The shield will stop the rock. <laughs> but David hit that boy upside the head with that rock. He came tumbling to the ground and David grabbed the giant's sword and cut his head off with his own sword. That was written for your learning. For your comfort. Yeah. That you might have hope. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> what you say, Pop? This was written so you might have. Why do I need. I ain't got against no giant. What about your debt? What about that infirmity? Yeah. What about that pain? Yeah. What about them children? Yeah. What about that unsaved spouse? Yeah. Yeah. What about that neighborhood you live in? Yeah. What about this government yeah. we're dealing with? Hallelujah. You say we ain't up against some giants? Yeah. I don't know where you living at. Yeah. Go down to the grocery store, some of y'all crying. Yeah. That ain't a giant. Yeah. Get to the gas station, some of y'all and fell out. Yeah. That ain't a giant. Yeah. But you mean we ain't got no giants? Hallelujah. Come on. We got all kind of giants up in this lane. Yeah. When, when, COVID, yeah. when COVID came through, knocking them out right and left. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Oh. That was a giant. When they when they issued that 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 venom, that was a giant. So what you mean we had no giant? You don't, you don't want to sleep. I ain't sleep. We didn't have plenty of them. Amen. You on the highway and your car break down on the side of the road. What you mean you ain't got a giant? That's the time to decree in the class something. What you decree in the class that my God's an ever present help. In a time of trouble. I'll not fear what men may do unto me, but I boldly declare that the Lord is my helper. He's my rock and my defense. But you can't get that doing like this. You gotta say something. Close close them. Romans 10 chapter. I'm gonna close. You wanna know how this works? I've been telling you how it works, but some folks don't want to do it. This is how it works. Amen. You gotta say something. I'm going to start the 8th verse, verse, 10th chapter of the book of Rome. I'm going to start the 8th verse and read to the 10th. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, what? Which we preach. I'm preaching it to you. So it should be in your heart and in your mouth. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Who's Lord? Jesus. He rose from the dead and said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. That's what he said. So if all power is given to Jesus and he's your Lord, guess where all power rests? And shall believe in thy heart that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you did that, you saved. Now watch it. With the heart, man believes. Under right standing with God or righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Deliverance, safety, soundness, preservation, healing, and it can denote prosperity. How do you get into it? With your mouth. You got to say something. Amen. But the heart man believes. But with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. It don't work for a lot of people. Because they're not saying what God say. They saying everything but what God say. Get the devil out your mouth. Get God in it. 
Amen. What did God say about you? Don't ever let the devil get you so twisted and caught up that you go mimicking him. The tongue is an unruly member. And it set up on fire the whole course of your nature or your passion. If the enemy get a hold of your tongue, he can have your whole body in flame. Hello, somebody. And guess what Paul said he was shooting at you? Fiery dots to set your tongue on fire. Don't give your tongue over to the devil. Your faith comes out your mouth. If you talk in doubt, you're full of doubt. Because out of the abundance of the heart, Matthew 12 and 34, the mouth speaker. So he was told, Solomon told us in Proverbs 16 and 1, the preparation of heart is in man. David said, hide that word in your heart. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. You get that word in your heart, I don't care what the devil do, the word going to come out. Hallelujah. Amen. You get to one place after a while, you'd be like me. I was on the job years ago, like y'all young people. I was young, you know, getting in it, just getting in this. Pastor, how come you got it like that? Because I wanted God. Amen. Whatever way I can get God, I want him. That's the way the script said, get him. So I was on the job, and the man was picking on me. I'm coming in. And I said to the Lord, I said, he's a child of the devil. Now I'm your child. He can't get away with that. So I went to look for him. By the time I got him and opened my mouth, he started batting his eyes and run off. What happened to him, Pastor? The Lord. He walked, stood off, looking at me. Like an old scared dog. Finally, finally, he eased on back up. I talked to him about the Lord. He was having a problem one day, and I picked up on it. I said, you've been having problems with your stomach, ain't you? He said, yeah, my, I was eating something, and the doc said it bust my stomach. And, and I had an operation, but I still have a problem with it. I said, I'm going to believe God for you. You know that man came, my friend? And he was this. He wasn't that. He was this. Amen. Amen. First, he got so scared when I had to rebuke him. <laughs> they didn't want to be around me. Then after God, I said, and this is what, and I forgot about this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I should have told you this. Because I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I didn't scare him. He don't even want to be around me. I can't talk to him. God, you got to help me reach him. And so that's what happened. I walked by him one day and picked it up. And I talked to him about it. And I, he told me what happened to him. I prayed for him. God healed him. And he built my fridge just like that. That's right. Amen. Did I say word like that? I, I didn't learn no better. I don't know who he was up under, but he was up under me. So you should have learned that. Amen. Amen. So don't let the enemy get a hold of your tongue. It'll set on fire your, your body. Have you so full of doubt and fear. And you'll be running around here scared of everything. And then inherited God. See, I, I know y'all understand that. That's why he said that. Most people don't understand that. Been, I had to just quiet them down. But the reason why you didn't get that because you understand that. Amen. You know, if, if, I, if somebody left you their house, what did you get? Woo! A house. If somebody left you a car in their wheel, what did you get? A car. Who would be the dumb if they didn't go get it? The one that's in, if you didn't go get it and they left it to you, then you'd have done it. Yeah. If they left you a house and you still renting it where you're at now and you don't move in that house, you have done it. Yeah. Nobody does that. You know how many people be fighting over what's in the wheel? Because yeah. they know if it's left in the wheel when that person dies, it's there. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The word said we inherited God. Yeah. Woo. Walk around here looking like old sorry lot. What's wrong with you? You inherited God. So your head should be up. Should be a smile on your face. Uh, at least a strong confession coming out your mouth. Because who got your back? Hallelujah. Am I right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. So I believe that if we inherited God, that means we inherited everything God got. We won't get into that again because I've been sharing it over you all. You should be stuff should be connected now. Like, I mean, I mean, explosion should be going on. Boom, 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 boom. You about, about to blow up right here. I don't give it don't work for you. It work for me. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for this opportunity to break the bread of life and share with your people what you put in my heart to give to them. I know that word works. Thank you for the confidence. Thank you for the zeal. Thank you for the press that they are receiving through the Holy Ghost to act on that word consistently, persistently, for you said it will never return void. It's doing what you said. And you said also, Father God, that it is a shield and a buckler 
to those who trust in him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Everyone said amen, amen and amen again. With God, all things are possible. Stop thinking about yourself and the rest of the world. With God, say it again. So you limited yourself and your perspective on things because of what they told you. When you inherit God, all that should disappear. All the limitations, all those uh, I can't this and I can't that and no way this going to work out because I don't have this and I don't have that. All that should disappear. You got what I'm saying? Yeah, that don't exist in, in your vocabulary anymore. So Philippians 4 and 13 says that should kill that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. That goes to all you that are here know this about with social media. You need to take this book, get it in your heart, find out what God said about you, and don't ever change it. If you got to fast and pray to get it down in your spirit, do it. So this is the hour when God is expecting his children to rise up and be an example to these people that are going through. This thing is about to become a nightmare. And if you don't start taking God at his word, you're going to be in the middle of that nightmare. But I'm going to be just like David. Looking at the nightmare, I don't care if it's bigger than me. I want to say, you come against me with whatever. <laughs> but do you see who got my back? So I don't even have to move. Be gone. <laughs> there have been times when similar situations have arisen. And I just thought upon who I am. And said go. And it left. You know why it left? Not because of. But because of. Yeah. Amen. And see I think that's the biggest problem. We got all our faith in how we feel. I don't care how I feel. I know who I am. And watch this. Whose I am. And that's what you need to get to know. Turn your back on the world, take up your cross, follow Jesus, and get to know who you are in God. Because everything that God gave Adam is yours. Everything Jesus inherited, get what? Is yours. So, yeah, they always talk about going back to Eden, but I not only inherited Eden, I inherited heaven too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If they, if they, if you know, they always talk about these multiple universes. They mind too. Amen. Amen. How come they belong to you, then, Pastor? Because every child of God, it belongs to them. And I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God, joined heir of Christ. It's all mine. He gave me everything. Amen. Because I want to take partake of that. You know, you got to be obedient to God first. And I ain't talking about disobedience. What do you say? Willing. Willing. Amen. Willing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you happy? I just gave you something to make you happy. Unless you love sin. If you love sin, repent right now and get right with Jesus. Bow your knee to the Lordship, confess him as Savior and Lord of your life, and walk away from sin and take up your cross and follow him. Because there ain't nothing out there. Y'all understand that? When the bombs start falling, he said, and not suffer the fire of the kindle upon you, nor the, the water will overflow you. Amen. When the bombs start falling, you're going to want that radiation not to kindle upon you. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Thank you, Pastor. When God kept Israel in Goshen, there was no more than keeping his people in a time of judgment. Because ten plagues fell on Egypt. But when that judgment fell on Egypt, it did not touch the Israelites. The God of Adam, the God of Abel, the God of Seth, the God of Enoch, the God of Methuselah, the God of Noah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Joseph, the God of Moses, the God of Joshua, the God of Caleb, the God of Israel is your God. You don't have to be afraid of none of this stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, God got me. God got me. Amen. Hallelujah. So devils tremble and run in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, for the, fire, for the fire hits you. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you and all those listening by will.
Facebook, YouTube, and social media. We appreciate you tuning in. Hey, man, we got a new magazine out. It just came. Those that are have already applied for the issue, uh, subscription, we'll be sending you all. You should get it sometime, either this week or next week. Amen. But it is nice. We Thank God we're doing quality material. Amen. And the only other thing about it, praise God, she says she's going to continue to try to work with me with it so we can still get it done. But uh, thank God for my daughter. Yes, God done blessed her, promoted her. Amen. Amen. This is the fourth issue for, for y'all that don't know it. Um, we still got plenty of the third issue. So if you want, you're still looking for that, you're welcome to, to get it. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you. And the Lord will nothing happen. Go by social media. We'll see you again Wednesday night.